Hello and welcome to this new Cyberpunk 2077 video and this video will be a guide for my beloved build because many of you have asked for it so I will showcase my what I call hill build pistol and katana build. Practically this build is what I've been playing the entirety of my campaign and also Phantom Liberty and it's totally viable on every difficulty level. The gameplay you see in this video is all recorded on very hard just to showcase the potential of this build. Of course we'll be going over the weapons I use, all the attribute points and perk points I've been choosing on different levels. And of course all of the cyberware I'm using in this build. If you want to jump to a specific section, go ahead and use the timestamps provided in the video description. Now grab a coffee or a tea because it's gonna be a long one. <laughs> Let's kick things off with the weapons. Of course I'm using a katana and this one is a crafted katana because I wanted one with a free mod slot because I use the severance mod right here when an enemy is below 50% health each hit to their head or limbs has a 20% chance to dismember or instantly kill. Also this mod can be unequipped if you don't have a crafted katana or one with a free mod slot you can still use something like the errata which I was using most of the time during my playthrough. Also let's check out the mod real quick. You automatically get all of those crafting specs when you have Phantom Liberty but you only can craft one since you need an active Chimera core and per playthrough you can only get one. So you have to decide which one of these four mods you want to craft. You have the Firecracker, the Wall Puncher, the Hecatomy and I went with Severance for my blades. In my next weapon slot I'm playing with a revolver right now with the old reliable because I really like it but you can also choose any other regular revolver like the overture. You can also of course play with the Malorian I still love that gun although it's not the best pistol anymore but if you want to go a little bit more stealth you can go with something like the Her Majesty or any other pistol you slap a silencer on. And of course in my third slot I'm playing with a sniper rifle. Right now I'm using the Sparky Iconic sniper rifle which you can get from one of the hideouts in Phantom Liberty. I really enjoy it but you can also go with something like the SPT-32 Dread which is just your regular tier 5 plus plus power sniper rifle. I tend to play with power weapons because I really enjoy the punch those pack and yeah I just like the feeling and the gunplay with those weapons so that's my preferred choice. Now let's dive into character and all the attribute and perk points. First up we're gonna talk about skill progression because I almost unlocked every perk point there is under skill progression you get uh, five points when you hit level 15 of the respective categories and then you get another five when you hit level 35 on the categories but that's it other than that you can get some skill points in the open world and of course for every level you unlock you get another skill point as you can see i leveled reflexes technical ability and cool to the maximum and then i put some points into intelligence and only one point in body that is because initially i thought i wanted to make a build with cyber deck and then also reflexes so a hacking katana samurai or something like that but I didn't enjoy the gameplay as much as I thought so I switched it up after a few hours into Phantom Liberty. So what I would do when you start fresh is I would put one point or my first point into body because there you have some really nice perks to get some health regen. So Painkiller unlocks slow health regen in combat and also Comeback Kid, Speed Junkie and Army of One are really helpful. Technical ability is the one I would level the latest so we'll talk about reflexes and cool first. Let's check out reflexes because I think here you should use your attribute points first. Don't mind the car perks just yet, those are late game, you don't need them at first. I would go ahead and level all of the movement abilities you've got in the middle tree. So focus on the big ones first until air dash level 3 so you unlock the ability to dash in mid air which is 
phenomenal. This is exactly the kind of movement I most of the time use instead of calling a car or any vehicle because back in vanilla Cyberpunk 2077 there was something similar called the K-Hop. You could basically hop across the map in super high speed using Kerenzikov and the double jump. I'm so happy they put that back into the game. It's not a glitch now but just regular movement and I absolutely love it. So this is something I would get really early. Also it helps in combat a lot. And then you head off to the sides and level the other ones. Also really important is lead and steel because it lets you deflect bullets or even redirect them back to your enemies. And the finishing perks over here I would unlock very late because yes they give you some health regen but you don't really need them in the early game. So save your points right here and just unlock all of the stuff in the middle tree and also the deflect bullet stuff. Now let's check out the cool category. Because I am playing with revolver, I'm going to the left side of the skill tree. But this build also works very well with throwing knives. So if that's your jam, just go ahead and put all the points I put on the left side into the right side of this tree. But since we're doing a Kill Bill build, we're focusing on pistols and revolvers. So you want to unlock Focus and Deadeye first and some of the corresponding perks. Highlights are Long Shot. When Deadeye is active, your shots always deal full damage regardless of distance. When Deadeye is active, High Noon gives you plus 35% reload speed for your next reload after neutralizing an enemy via Headshot or Weak Spot. And also it slows time by 50% during your reload. This is really good. Just to clarify, Deadeye is always active when you're above 85% stamina. It also gives you plus 20% headshot damage and plus 20% weak spot damage. Also, you don't have any bullet spread anymore, which is of course really, really good. The perk pull makes shooting grenades out of the air easier when focus is active, which is really nice and flashy. And rinse and reload gives you plus 10% reload speed for your next reload after neutralizing an enemy while aiming. This stacks two times, so plus 20% reload speed, which is of course really good when you play with pistols or revolvers or sniper rifles. And quick draw gives you plus 30% weapon swap speed when swapping to pistols, revolvers, sniper rifles and precision rifles. And you also get plus 30% stamina when swapping during combat, so always welcome. But it gets really interesting when we go up here to Nerves of Tungsten Steel, because this gives you, when Deadeye is active, guaranteed crit hits for headshots and weak spots. Also, the damage is increased as distance increases to a maximum of plus 25%. And run and gun is also really good because hip firing now doesn't consume any stamina. And when focus is active, you get plus 25% movement speed. Everything we just talked about is really early available to you as you need only level 40-ish around something like that to unlock all of the abilities. And now it's time to take another look at technical ability because this is what happens afterwards after you leveled all the things we just mentioned. When you unlocked everything we just talked about then you should definitely focus on technical ability because here it gets really interesting because you can crank up your cyberware to the maximum. So firstly go ahead and unlock all of the big nodes until you hit edge runner. After that the first things I would unlock is extended warranty plus 15% duration for all cyberware effects which is really great. Renaissance Punk plus 4 cyberware capacity for each attribute at 9 or higher. Driver update for all cyberware to gain an additional stat modifier. And Lucky Day which gives you plus 25% crafting components from looting. And then just gradually unlock them all. Also, quick side note, if you have problems with survivability or your health, you can invest one attribute point early into technical ability and unlock those three perks right here, as they give you faster recharge rates for your health items. Lastly, let's check out the cool tree once again, because I put my final points into some stealth action right here. I've got Feline Footwork and Ninjutsu. 
and also Creeping Death and Vanishing Act in the middle tree. And then I went over to the right tree for Killer Instinct and Quick Getaway, which all helps for a little bit of stealth. And of course, in the end, we're gonna take a look at the Relic skill tree. The perk I would unlock firstly is Vulnerability Analytics, because this gives you an optical indication on crit spots for enemies. As you can see, this square on the enemy is a crit spot. If you hit it, it will explode and will not only hurt him, but also the enemies around him, which is really, really strong. Then of course unlock the perks for the Mantis Blades, which are good when you play with Mantis Blades, but I usually only play with my Katana anyways, so that's up to you if you need it or not. Also a good option is the Emergency Cloaking, which improves Optical Camo Cyberware and also lets you activate Optical Camo during combat by pressing a certain button. But in order to use the Emergency Cloaking, you will have to install the Optical Camo Cyberware and then you will have to assign it to one of your quick access slots. So you will have to lose your grenade or your healing item. But that's it for all the attributes and skill points and I've put build planner links in the video description for all leveling stages so if you want to check those out go ahead and take a look at the video description. But now let's head over to the cyberware. And of course the heart of this build is the Militech Apogee Santa Vista because this one slows time by 85% which is really really good. It also gives you plus 15% headshot damage plus 15% crit chance and plus 15% crit damage when leveled all the way to tier 5 plus plus. When neutralizing an enemy when it's active it also gives you plus 20% extended duration and plus 22% stamina which of course is perfect for our build. So this is definitely the Sandivistan I would use. Let's check out my ocular device. This is the Kiroshi Cockatrice Optics, the iconic version. And this one gives you increased crit chance by 35%, makes the 30 cyberware capacity definitely worth it. Like I said, I like to play with power weapons. So of course I've got the Ballistic Co-Processor and I use the Shock Absorber, which reduces recoil by 24%. In the circulatory system, I use the Adrenaline Booster, which gives me 25% stamina whenever I use a melee weapon to neutralize an enemy, so all the time. Heal on kill is a given because it gives you 7.5% heal when you neutralize any enemy, so perfect for every build, I would say. Micro Rotors is, of course, for a plus 25% melee attack speed. And like I said before, I like to use reinforced tendons for the double jump. Now let's head over to the left side of the cyberware and the frontal cortex is especially interesting because we only use stuff that doesn't use any RAM as we don't have a cyber deck. I'm using here the mechatronic core, which gives us plus 40% damage against drones, robots, mechs and turrets. But you can definitely install this very late. It's not of much use early on. Then we've got the Newton module, which reduces the cooldown by 1.35% instantly for all cyberware after neutralizing an enemy. This one's also nice to have, but I installed it pretty late. But the really important one up here is self-ice, as it automatically negates an enemy quick hack. And since we don't have a cyber deck to counter enemy quick hacks, it is really nice that with this cyberware, quick hacks can be negated. Of course, we use the Mantis Blades, like I said before. Let's head over to the Skeleton. The Dense Marrow gives us plus 27% melee damage and plus 15% melee stamina cost. And also a lot of armor, so definitely worth it. The Epimorphic Skeleton is really hefty on your cyberware capacity, but it gives you the most amount of armor and also plus 15% max health, so great for survivability. And then I use Bionic Joints. This is just armor, also a very high rating. Now let's head over to the nervous system. And at first, when I was playing as a Netrunner, I used the Kerensikov here, but in the end, I switched it out 
for the stabber because if I want to slow time, I can use the Militech Apogee and the stabber gives us plus 20% crit chance with blades and throwable weapons. So pretty good for our build. The Reflex Tuner slows time by 60% for 4.5 seconds when your health drops below 25%, which is great because if you're in the heat of a battle and maybe a sniper bullet hits you and almost drops you, time will be slowed down and works like kind of alarm bells, so you have to get out of the situation, regroup, maybe use some health and then jump back into the fight. And then we've got the Adreno Trigger, the iconic version. There's also a normal version, which is not as hefty on your cyberware capacity. So go ahead and use this if you don't have as much capacity on the left side. But I'm using the iconic version here, which gives me plus 30% movement speed for 60 seconds when entering combat. And this, of course, is pretty, pretty significant. In the integumentary system, we use nanoplating, 7% chance to block an incoming projectile and plus 100% bonus chance after performing a dodge or dash which we do all the time. Then we've got the pain editor, which gives us a huge amount of armor, but also minus 7% of all incoming damage. And last but not least, we've got the subdermal armor, which in fact is just armor. And that's it for the cyberware. But actually that's also it for the build. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it helps you out to build your V like kill build with a really nice katana and pistol or revolver build. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated as it helps the channel out a lot. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also enjoy my next video. So subscribe to the channel and activate the bell notification to never miss a future video. But that's it from me for now. I wish you all an awesome day and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.